Imagine fighting climate change is easy. As easy as taking a subscription. And imagine we can use the capitalist system to fight climate change. Imagine you can shut down a coal-fired power plant. This is what I want to talk about today, how this works. And why do we have to fight climate change? I guess all of you have seen these pictures of wildfires and droughts and hurricanes and these events becoming more and more frequently due to climate change. So where do we stand? Right now, we are shooting ourselves out of the safe climate zone, the zone where humanity has prospered. The Earth has heated up 1.1 degrees already, and in 20 years, we can reach two degrees if politics, the economy, and we don't change fast. So why is two degrees a problem? Why should we fight for 1.5 degrees? At two degrees, insects will lose three times more of their habitable area, and plants will lose two times more of their habitable area. And the same goes for us humans. Large parts of the world will become uninhabitable at two degrees. And we will lose a whole ecosystem, the coral reefs, where fish breed. And this would have a huge impact on food supply. And there will be no more Nemo fish, because the clownfish just can't adapt that fast. So what can you do? Well, stop emitting greenhouse gases. Stop heating. Stop eating dairy products. Stop going by car. Stop going by plane. Stop using electricity even, because it's produced with fossil fuels. Seems impossible, right? It seems like we are not allowed to live anymore. And then I know how hard even the smallest changes can feel. I would like to live completely vegan, but I just don't like the milk substitute in my coffee. I even tried the fancy barista version, but I just don't like it. I will keep on trying, but I know how hard even the smallest changes can feel. And then you think, what do these small changes actually matter if there are so many coal-fired power plants still running in Europe? All these little dots here are coal-fired power plants, and they are the big polluters. What can be done about them? I thought, like many others, renewable energy, of course. That must be the solution. So I started my first job at a renewable energy company, and I was lucky to do an international trainee program where I learned about the whole landscape. And here we were in Norway visiting a wind farm together with the international trainee group. And here's uh, Gürjan from Turkey, another international trainee. But then, do more renewables really reduce CO2 emissions in Europe? In my next trainee station, I worked in Amsterdam in the global carbon team, trading CO2 certificates and emission rights. And there I learned something devastating. I learned that building more renewables doesn't have automatically the desired effect, the desired emission reduction that we want. Because in Europe, we already have a system in place to reduce emissions, the EU emission trading system. And if you want to reduce emissions, you have to work with the system. So, I want to explain to you how the system works. Because if you understand it, you can use it, and you can achieve what you want to achieve. So the emission trading system caps the CO2 emissions from the energy sector, the industry sector, and European air travel. And you can imagine it a bit like the government controlling the amount of garbage bins. 
So if I personally want to make garbage, I have to order a garbage bin from the government. And if I want to make more garbage, I have to order another garbage bin. But if the total amount of garbage bins is limited, then maybe there are no more garbage bins available. So I have to ask around my neighbors, do you have some free space in your garbage bin, which I could use? And maybe my neighbor says, yes, you can use my free space, but pay me for it. Or my neighbor says, no, I'm sorry, I don't have any free space. And then I'm not allowed to make any more garbage. So then I have to change my lifestyle to produce less garbage. And that's what's happening with the EU emission trading system. The government is limiting the total amount of CO2 emissions in Europe. And the industry sector, the energy sector and European air travel, if they want to emit, they have to buy emission rights from the government. And they can also trade these emission rights among themselves. But what the government also does is it limits the total available amount of emission rights each year to achieve its climate goals. That's a bit like musical chairs, where the government is taking away the chairs one by one. Only that the government is telling the companies when the music is going to stop, so that the companies can plan accordingly. And what we want to do now is take away some more chairs. So how do we do that? It's basically simple. We just buy away the emission rights so they, they can't be bought anymore by a company that wants to release more CO2 emissions. And this is how it looks like in reality. That's an account statement of the nonprofit organization I founded for tomorrow. It's a bit like a bank account. So here you see the EU general allowances. These are the emission rights, the EUAs. And we have taken out 858 emission rights so far. So what does it mean? Each emission allowances or emission right allows you to emit one ton of CO2. So if we take out 858 emission rights, these 858 tons of CO2 are no longer allowed to be released by the industry or the energy sector. And that's the equivalent of shutting down a small coal-fired power plant for 19 hours. But how do we really shut down coal-fired power plants? That's something I learned in another trainee station where I was analyzing the emerging markets so this picture here was taken in Brazil, right before a meeting with Petrobras, a big oil company. Because in Brazil, there was a strange market design that led to something our consultant called the Chanel Number no. 5 power plants. Power plants that are run with Chanel Number no. 5. No, no, not really. They are run with oil. And normally, oil is way too expensive to be burned in large-scale power plants. But due to the Brazilian market design, it was profitable to burn oil in these power plants. And then, in a capitalist system, companies do what's profitable. So how do we make it unprofitable to burn coal in power plants? We do that as well by taking away emission rights. Because by taking away emission rights, we redu reduce the total available amount. And the emission rights become more scarce. And if something becomes scarce, prices go up. And they do already. So when I started for tomorrow last year, prices were at 20 euros per ton. Now they more than doubled to over 40 euros per ton. And what effect does it have on coal-fired power plants? That's something... I want to show you because I planned power production in my first trainee station. That was actually quite huge, just coming from university and then you sit there and you can decide if an 800 megawatt gas-fired power plant should run the next day or if it's already running, if it's maybe better to switch it off. So how do you make such a huge decision? Well, you just do what's profitable. So the calculation, it's a bit difficult, but I will explain it in a simplified way. So what you have is your gas price and your CO2 price. And with that, you can calculate your strike price in detail. You have your gas price 
and then you have your CO2 price and you have a CO2 factor, which is quite low for gas. It's much higher for coal. And then you have your full run efficiency. That means how much power can I get out of burning my gas and releasing the CO2. And that way you can calculate your strike price. And if the market price is above your strike price, then it's profitable to run your power plant. If the market price is just at your strike price, then if your power plant is already running, you'll probably keep it running and hope for higher prices in the future. But if the CO2 price rises, then you better shut it off. Because if the market price is lower than your strike price, each hour you run your power plant, you are making a loss. Because the ingredients that you burn and the CO2 that re you release is more expensive than what you get for the power that you produce. And if your power plant is shut off a lot of days in the year, then it goes to higher management. And higher management will consider that maybe it's better to shut down the power plant completely to save maintenance and personnel costs. And this is what's happening already in Germany. Last year, Vattenfall announced that it wants to shut down its largest coal-fired power plant, a power plant that only went into operation six years ago, so it's really young. And why did they want to do that? Well, because of low wholesale prices for electricity and because of rising prices for CO2. And then it becomes unprofitable to run your power plant. And the capitalist system dictates you, if you are losing money with it, you have to do something. What do you do? You look, what can I do? What's still profitable? And now this coal-fired power plant is really shut down. And it's changed to become part of Hamburg's hydrogen strategy, because that's what's profitable now. And that's the beauty of the system, because we can make climate damaging business unprofitable and we can make it profitable for companies to work on climate solutions instead. And we can do that all around the world. There are a lot of these emission trading systems. There's the one in Europe, of course. Then there's one in Korea, one in Canada, one in California, one in Japan, one in Mexico and now one in China, and there are a lot more to come. In this way, we can force the economy to work on climate solutions. And it's actually easy to buy these emission rights. It's as easy as online shopping. There are some platforms already, like the carbon killers in the Netherlands and the compensators in Germany, where you can just buy away emission rights as a one-off. And I found it for tomorrow to make it even more convenient. So what we did is we looked at successful internet companies like Netflix. So what Netflix did in 99, they offered a subscription model. And six years later, they had five million subscribers. So we did with For Tomorrow the same. We offer a subscription model so that you can buy away these emission rights on a regular basis. What we also do is we plant trees to take CO2 out of the air. But why we do that and why we do that in Europe, that's another story. For now, I just want you to remember that you have the strength to shut down coal-fired power plants. You can beat the system by using the system. So the next time you subscribe to something, why not subscribe to climate protection? to make climate damaging business unprofitable and make it profitable to work on climate solutions. This way, we can do our bit to provide a future worth living for us and for the future generations.